Hello, welcome to my channel, Aaliyah in Medicine. My name is Aaliyah, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the application timeline. So, I applied last May, and I'll be starting school at the end of July. And so, in this video, I'll talk about when I started my personal statement, when I took the MCAT, when I submitted, and then also when I heard back from schools, from secondaries, interviews, acceptances, things like that. So if you're applying this cycle or applying soon and interested in knowing um, how it works with those different dates, just keep watching and we'll jump right in. Okay, starting with things you need to submit your application. I started working on my personal statement in November, December, the year before I applied. And so that was really helpful because I spent a lot of time getting, you know, advice from different people and going through a lot of drafts, picking which stories sounded the best, made sense for my personal statement. And that probably made a big difference <laughs> in my application. And then along with that, I took my MCAT in January and I was going to take it earlier, but I ended up pushing it back because I was not ready. And I highly recommend that because it is, even though it's expensive to reschedule, it is expensive to retake the test and it's best to have an idea of what score you're going to get going in because you know you only want to take that test once and then so after the MCAT I asked for letters of rec around end of March and you can definitely ask for them earlier or when right after you finish an experience and then the activities descriptions. I started those in April and they don't take that long. And so I ordered transcripts May 1st. And then along with that, there's the situational judgment test. So that is the old version of preview. That's what it was called when I took it. And so I, <laughs> I took I signed up for that in the middle of May to take it in June. So it doesn't matter that much when you take it, you just need to get it in by the school's deadline. So I decided to sign up to take it after my primary application was submitted. And then Casper, I signed up to take May 20th. So I took that before I submitted my primary application. Again, it's what days work for you and as long as you're getting it in by the school's deadline. So both of those tests, I kind of wanted to get in earlier rather than later, um, but still have time to prepare. Although there's not that much preparing for those tests. Like I would say a week to two days, really. Um, yeah, definitely do some practice questions though so you know what it'll be like. And so I think that's everything for submitting. And so next, then I'll go through like kind of the deadlines once you actually submit your application. So the application opens the beginning of May and then it's not open to submit until the end of May. So for our application cycle, it was open to submit May 27. And I didn't have all my stuff together. So I worked on it a little longer and submitted it June 2nd. And so that day once I submitted it, it was able to be processed for verification by the AAMC. So I got an email June 17th that my application was ready for review. And I guess that means it had everything it needed. And then I got an email June 23rd that my application was verified. And so in that in-between period, it says, you know, once you submit, it can take six to eight weeks to verify your application. But if you submit earlier, it can happen a lot faster. So I submitted June 2nd and was all verified by June 23rd. And then it doesn't, it's AAMC doesn't actually send the application to schools until for my year, June 25th. And so the dates will vary a little bit, but AAMC will tell you what day they're sending all the completed and verified applications out. And so a goal for me, I wanted to submit early. So I wanted my application to be verified before 625. And even though I didn't submit on the first day, it still was. So my application was completely verified by June 23rd. 
and I submitted just one school so it could start the process because I was also a little bit still confirming my school list. So once I got an email, it was verified. I added like the majority of my schools. And then on the day it was sent to schools, I added a few more <laughs> kind of for different reasons. But, you know, ideally, as soon as your application is going to be sent to schools or going to be verified, um, you want to have your schools in. When, I mean, <laughs> really you want to have it have all your schools in when it's sent to schools. And so if you get it verified before the day it's sent to schools, you know, you have an in-between period. But if you submit after that date, then you would want all your schools in before then. So anyway, on to secondaries. So for secondaries, I pre-wrote my secondaries after submitting, but before my application was sent to schools. So I submitted June 2nd and it was sent to school June 25th. And so that's when I pre-wrote by looking up online past questions because they typically stay the same. And so some basic and common ones were like, describe what diversity you bring or why you talk about an adversity you went through. And then like uh, talking about how COVID affected you. So those are pretty common questions and you can find many of school specific questions online and then so the day applications were sent to schools June 25th some schools have automatic secondaries and that was something I also checked different websites to see so then I had an idea which ones I should go ahead and pre-write because they sent automatic secondaries so I prioritized pre-writing those first and then for secondaries I received secondaries um, sending it in like the first day, first wave, I received secondaries from June 25th all the way to 827. And so schools have different like processes for sending secondaries. But for all of those, I tried to get them in within two weeks. I didn't do all of them for different reasons. But the ones I did, I tried to get them in within two weeks. And some schools check um, they may have a deadline of like one week and a lot of them I feel like had a deadline of four weeks but it definitely varies so it's a good idea to get them in sooner because your whole application is not complete until they receive everything so you know your primary application your secondaries and anything the secondaries ask for and then looking at all that including um, letters of rec also before they are like and some schools will need all that before considering your application to offer for an interview. Most schools will. On to interviews. I received my first interview July 28th and my last interview April 11th. So even down to April when it feels like the cycle is towards the end, schools are still sending out interviews. And so in that period also, it's good to check schools portals to see if they take update letters, transcripts, CVs, different schools take different stuff. But if you're really interested in a school, or if you have the time, you would want to, you know, tell a school that you're interested by sending an update letter, or if you have new grades, sending a transcript and telling them, you know, you're interested and what you what new you have going on that, you know, makes you a great candidate for the school, something like that. And so I sent um, update letters to schools that allowed them. I attended like open houses for schools. That's a good way to, you know, show your face and try to get to know the people in admissions, learn more about a school, show you're interested. Those are different things you can do. And then, so let's see. For interviews, you wanna send a thank you letter. There's two common types of interviews, MMI and then a one-on-one. -on -one. And then actually there's multiple. There's also like group interviews. And so that can be multiple applicants and one interviewer or multiple multiple interviewers and one applicant. And usually a school will say on their website what type they are, but it's really important to of course prepare for those and nice to send thank you letters afterwards. And so also after interviews you can send, well, depending on the school, you can send a letter of interest or a letter of intent 
So I sent letters of interest to schools I was really interested in after interviews while they were deciding whether or not to accept me to kind of try to sway them to accept me because like I was really interested in their program and people or schools want students that are really interested in their program. So um, as far as acceptances, I got my first acceptance in or yeah, at the beginning of November and then my last acceptance the end of April and I got eight acceptances out of my 10 interviews and then I, from some of those I was put on a wait list that I eventually left. This video is already longer than I was really planning for it to be but it's a long application cycle and even once you get accepted there's a timeline for narrowing your schools you're accepted into to like three and then down to one following the AMC guidelines and then schools will have a commit to enroll date where you select an AAMC you have dropped all your other schools and you're committing to enroll in one school so when you're finally at that fun part of the process that's something that's there at the end but that is pretty much the overview so if you have questions add them in the comments below and that's it follow me on alien medicine on instagram and i hope you enjoyed the video and good luck to everyone applying to medical school